This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at oxidation states. So we'll start with a quick introduction to oxidation states. The oxidation state is the hypothetical charge an atom would have if the bonds are assumed to be 100% ionic with no covalent character. So oxidation states assume 100% ionic bonding with no covalent character. Oxidation states are written with a plus or minus first followed by the number. For example, plus two, not two plus. And finally, the term oxidation number is sometimes used interchangeably with oxidation state. So you might hear the terms oxidation number versus oxidation state, and although they mean slightly different things, they can be used interchangeably. So next we'll have a look at the rules of how to determine oxidation states. So the first rule concerns elements. Elements are assigned an oxidation state of zero. Examples of elements include Fe, Cu, Zn, O2, Br2, Cl2, and N2. And all these, because they're elements, have oxidation states of zero. Rule number two is the sum of the oxidation states of the atoms in a compound is equal to zero. So for example, in H2O, the oxidation state of the O will be minus two, and the H will be plus one and the sum of those oxidation states is equal to zero. So the sum of the oxidation states in a compound must be equal to zero because compounds are neutral. Rule number three is the charge on an ion is numerically equal to its oxidation state. So for example, the oxidation state of the Mg2 plus ion is plus two, and the oxidation state of the S2 minus ion is minus two. So whenever you have an ion, the charge is equal to the oxidation state, except it's written as the sign first, followed by the number. So that's plus two or minus two. Rule number four concerns hydrogen. So hydrogen in compounds is assigned an oxidation state of plus one, except in certain metal hydrides in which it is negative one. So here we have some examples in methane, which is CH4. The hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus one, and the carbon is minus four, and the sum of the oxidation states equals zero because methane is a compound. In NaH, which is a metal hydride, the sodium has an oxidation state of plus one, and the hydrogen is negative one. So most of the time, hydrogen is plus one, except in the rare cases where we have a metal hydride. The next rule concerns fluorine. So fluorine in compounds is always assigned an oxidation state of negative one. So here's some examples in HF, the H has an oxidation state of plus one and the F is minus one. Or in NAF, the Na is plus one and the F is minus one. Moving on to rule number six, which is about oxygen. So oxygen in a compound is assigned an oxidation state of minus two, unless it is combined with fluorine or in a peroxide. So here's some examples in OF2, the F has an oxidation state of minus one, and the O is plus two. And in H2O2, which is a peroxide, the H is plus one, and the O is minus one. So oxygen is usually minus two, except when combined with certain elements or in a peroxide. The next rule, rule number seven, concerns chlorine. So chlorine in a compound usually has an oxidation state of minus one, unless it is combined with oxygen or fluorine. For example, in Cl2O, the oxidation state of chlorine is plus one and the O is minus two. However, you should be aware that chlorine, like all group 17 elements, can have variable oxidation states. So you can't always assume that chlorine is minus one. And the last rule, number eight, concerns polyatomic ions or molecular ions. And for these, the sum of the oxidation states must equal the charge on the ion. So for example, in the SO4 two minus ion, the sulfate ion, the oxidation state of the S is plus six and the O is minus two. And the sum of the oxidation states is minus two, which is the same as the charge on the ion, which is two minus. So next we'll have a look how oxidation states or rather oxidation numbers are represented by Roman numerals. So here we have some example compounds. So we have copper one oxide and copper two oxide. So the one and the two refer to the oxidation state or rather oxidation number of the metal ion in the compound. So in copper one oxide, the copper has a plus one oxidation state and in copper two, it has a plus two oxidation state. 
Then we have iron 2 chloride and iron 3 chloride. With the iron ion can be the Fe2 plus ion with an oxidation state of plus 2 or the Fe3 plus ion with an oxidation state of plus 3. So when you see a Roman numeral in the name of a compound, it refers to the oxidation state or oxidation number of the metal in the compound. So next we look at the oxidation states of the first row D block elements. And as we can see, these have what is known as variable oxidation states. So most of the first row D block elements have more than one possible oxidation state. And we can see that the number of oxidation states increases until we reach manganese which has possible oxidation states of plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 6 and plus 7. We can also see that most D-block elements have an oxidation state of plus 2, except scandium, which only has an oxidation state of plus 3. But the idea here is that these first row D-block elements can have variable oxidation states. And this is because of the closeness in energy of the 4S and the 3D sublevels. So next we'll have a look at some oxidation states of polyatomic ions such as the nitrate ion, the nitrite ion, the sulfate ion and the sulfite ion. So the formulas are NO3-, NO2-, SO4-, and SO3-. So in the nitrate ion the nitrogen has an oxidation state of plus 5 and in the nitrite ion it's plus 3. And then we have sulfur in the sulfate ion which is plus 6. And we have sulfur in the sulfite ion, which is plus 4. 